Hi guys, this is Mary Ann Salamo again, and I have some exciting news. Recently, I put out a video discussing how brushes work in Photoshop, and I am happy to report that I found my part two. So that's going to be following this. But while I have you watching, I'm going to crop this image because then I'm going to crop it unrestrained. And we'll see where it ends because as I was looking, I thought I saw this through my folders and I said this would be the perfect image to teach you how to paint eyes. So this is the image that I'm going to be working on. I had recorded a video about a year ago. And I'm just going to crop this. I did record a video about a year ago and I find that a lot of Photoshop has changed since 2024. So... It's probably best for me to re-record and edit as I go. I'm probably going to release them as parts. Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, which probably be the easiest way to do it. Instead of recording it all and then editing it all, I'm going to make everyone's life easier, especially mine. So on that note, please stay tuned and see Part 2 of my video of how brushes work in Photoshop and how you can fake a pen and ink technique with the Photoshop brush. And I opened this image for you and I'm gonna take you over to my layers to show you what I did. So I have my background, then I have this layer I called canvas. And I was thinking it could be like the piece of paper in Painter. What if I just filled it? Sometimes it's hard to find the fill tool in the new fill tool. Where are you? Are you with the eyedropper now? Where are you, Phil? Ah, you know what? drop down. So fill, because I can't find the bucket right now. Fill, foreground color is white, normal, 100% opacity. There goes my image. So now it looks like painter, right? But what if I turn the fill down to 32% or 30% like I had it in Painter. Now I can do this technique called ink. And if I get the brush and depending on how big I want the line of my ink, let's say, let's work on the bow, even though the puppy is very cute. That's my Zoe, she's very cute. Let's work on the bow, all right? So let's say I get a brush to do inking. I'm going to get my brush. And again, remember, like I told you, it's a little, you know, it's different now in Photoshop. You don't change, you always use the same brush, but you use different ones. And they have dry media, and that would work as you expect. If this is 100% opacity, you're going to see. Okay, there, this is a little grainy brush. Okay, and now if I shut it off, goodbye. If I shut this off, up, oh, it's on my drawing. If I shut these off, up, oh, there it is. We shut that off or turn this on and then put this back to 100% is my ink. And if I put the brush at the hard round brush and we keep the opacity, we keep the flow at 100% because you want it to look like ink, right? So you get a hard round and you get it probably, you got to see how many points, see that's, a, that, that's big. You got to see what one point looks like. One point is too small. Let's see. Uh, seven points is too big. Try four points and you can zoom out. You put your image back on. You put all your layers back on. You turn your paper to 30% so you could see the image underneath. And now you can... Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Okay, this is a drinking game. Only if you're over the age of 18. When I am on the wrong layer, please take a drink. I promise by the end of my videos, you will be sloshed. I have a, a, a video coming talking about a workspace because this is mine. This area right here are all the things I find I frequently use, the navigator, the, the, the histogram. And I'm going to show you how I set up my desktop specific, specific, I can't speak either, specifically for certain tasks, photo editing, painting, like that. So I was on the wrong layer. So I'm going to undo it. Going to go back. Now I'm going to fill my paper to 100%. This is my ink layer. Ah, I got some ink on my canvas. What do I do? I could always fill it that I drew on the wrong layer, right? Fill. This is how we problem solve, right? This is how we problem solve in life. We don't, ah, made it black. Make it white. <laughs> 
fit in it with white, not the black. Okay, there it is. Now it's filled in white. Okay, so you go up to your ink layer. Make sure that's at 100%. Make sure your opacity is at 100%. Make sure your flow is at 100%. Turn your canvas down, even 20%, so you can see the image underneath. And now, and change your brush back to black. Let's undo that. See, these are the little silly little tricks you're going to learn in my video when things go wrong. You're going to say, what? Why did that happen? Well, Marion told me to do it this way, but Marion was doing it wrong. Okay, Mar I am. I talk about myself in the third person when I'm alone, sorry. But I'm not alone. You guys are out there. So you could see here I'm doing like my inking. And this is where it's going to get easy. This is where the trick is going to get easier. So I have a paint layer. I have a paint layer and this little doggy's bow is white. And what if I wanted to keep it white? I get a soft round. Not the pressure size, but again, this pressure, opacity, and flow, okay? And now that I'm going to layer underneath, it should just fill in the, ah, no, covers the ink, covers the ink. Well, we're also at 100% opacity. The difference is it's not going to smear the ink. So there's a way to play here and figure it out. We turn the brush opacity and flow down and we're using the brush opacity and flow and we, we paint a little gentler that's still going to cover the ink but then you can always move the ink to the top again and there is no fear of smearing this ink as opposed to painter where the fear of painting on the ink layer like I just did can screw you up and if you put it on top you're still screwed so you have to make sure that your ink stays ink and your paint stays paint and you can ink first with it underneath and I'm going to turn the opacity all the way up so you can see what I scribbled. Okay, this is the ink layer. I messed up. I put this white paint over the ink and that's why my line looks all messed up. But then if I and, I, and if I put more paint on it, it was white the paint and I'm painting on white. Let's say if I painted pink. Let's say I painted pink. Let me paint pink and I'm going to go in the paint layer. I'm on the paint layer. I'm going to make my brush bigger. And I'm painting over that ink. Well, that's, a, that's going to be a problem because it's making my ink fade. So what do I do? I lift my ink above my paint. And that solves my problem there. So I hope you found this video informative. I hope it gave you a better idea of how brushes work in Photoshop and a little idea of how you could use Photoshop if you're a traditional artist and want to paint and draw in it. I'm not sure if I'm completely sold on Photoshop over Painter. We shall see. Hopefully you'll tune in. Please subscribe and I will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.